crypto hardware wallets and QR code scanning. Is it really worth getting a 100% air gapped wallet? In my experience so far, I'm going to have to say no, it's not worth getting a 100% air gapped wallet because oftentimes it's going to require you to use QR code scanning. In some cases, you'll have the ability to use an SD card as well as the camera for QR code scanning. In other cases, I mean, there might be some wallets on the market somewhere that only have SD cards. However, if your wallet requires you to use QR code scanning, I would suggest considering some other option. Because at least in my experience, QR code scanning, and in particular the dynamic QR codes, it can be a surprisingly frustrating experience. For example, one of the wallets that I own, which is a air-gapped wallet, is the SafePal S1. And it does have a USB port, you know, like it doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't have uh, like some sort of NFC or any other type of radio communication. It, it's not set up for the software to run on a desktop or, or a mobile device where you connect the USB port to your device in order to communicate directly with your wallet and sign transactions. This is meant as a air gapped wallet where you you have to use the built in camera and you have to scan QR codes. And I know what you might be thinking, you might be thinking, well, maybe maybe the problem is, you know, the small screen. And unfortunately, at least in my experience so far, that's definitely not the case. For example, I also own a Keystone 3 Pro, which has a much larger screen. And just for the sake of a comparison, if I bring the SafePal S1 back up here, you can see that the screen on the, the Keystone 3 Pro is much larger than the screen on the SafePal S1. Bottom line is that I've had virtually the identical experience and frustrations with the Keystone 3 Pro when using the QR code scanner. And you know, that's kind of unfortunate because the SafePal S1 one, it's one of the more cost-effective wallets. It's $50. But, well, I've already said what my issue, and it's actually a fairly big issue. And to be clear, that issue with QR code scanning, I have sat there and fought with it and wrestled with it for 10, 15, 20 minutes. In fact, in some cases, I just give up. I just say, you know what, I, I guess I'm just not going to transfer the crypto today. And so that's pretty much why I went ahead and purchased the Tangem Classic or Tangem 1.0 only for, you know, like five, six weeks later, then they announced the, the new Tangem, the Tangem 2.0. And so, of course, I went ahead and bought the Tangem 2.0. And now, of course, they've announced, you know, color choices. Like, I think they have like blue and yellow and green or, or something like that, as well as black, which I don't have a problem with the black necessarily. But, you know, since obviously I make videos on YouTube, I think it would be a little bit easier to showcase like a yellow or a blue, like a light blue Tangem card than this black on black. But as far as the usability, these are far easier to use than something that requires you to use QR code scanning. And even though, yeah, these, these communicate through NFC, and so they're not 100% air gapped, I think that it's reasonable to say that these are still you know, pretty secure. I don't currently own a decent hardware wallet, meaning the, the decent brand, such as the decent biometric wallet, but it is one of the wallets that I am most curious in getting potentially. I don't really want to collect, you know, dozens of hardware wallets, but if I find a bunch of cryptos that I really want to put into cold storage supported by this wallet and not by, say, my Tangem, I might just go ahead and get a decent biometric wallet this year because this doesn't have a camera on the hardware wallet. And so it probably doesn't ever run into a situation where it requires you to use a QR code scanner. But I'm making a bit of an assumption there. So don't don't make a purchase decision based on that one detail, because I don't know if that's in fact true, because you got to remember there's always some sort of companion software that you use with a hardware wallet. And the decent biometric wallet, the software, you'll see in the screenshot here that you can send to a receiving address 
using a QR code scan. So, you know, the software would be installed on a mobile phone and your phone's gonna have a camera and the software can take advantage of that camera. But the main driving idea behind my interest in possibly getting a decent biometric wallet is just one example, is because of my hope that because it's not a 100% air-gapped wallet and it does have, I believe it's USB and Let's go back and take a look here. Okay, so it might not be USB connectivity and it might not have NFC either. I don't see NFC or USB listed, but it does support Bluetooth. And so in other words, obviously that's not air gapped. However, it's probably far easier to use. And also, by the way, the phone that I've been using is the Samsung Galaxy S22. So like Android or not, like Samsung or not, it's not an S24, you know, the latest model, but this is a high-end phone and I'm using the software that comes with it for the camera. This is not rooted in ROMs. I have not used a different camera software. Again, it's a Galaxy S22, which is by Samsung. The carrier is Google Fi, who in turn uses, I believe, T-Mobile and Sprint cellular service. However, I, to my understanding, the software is from Samsung. Like there's, you know, like for instance, Google doesn't load the same software that they load on like a Google Pixel phone just because you're getting the S22 from Google Fi. And so, yeah, in my in my opinion, I would recommend that you get maybe a treasure, not my, not my first choice, but I would get a treasure over a ledger or get a Tangem wallet. You could get a decent biometric wallet. You could also get a NFC card wallet from Decent, which I have another video just talking a little bit about, but here you can see it. And you can you can get the NFC card wallet as well as the card backup for the wallet for less than $40. You could decide not to get a hardware wallet. You could just use software wallets, which isn't as secure, but it's still an option. I just would recommend, especially for the average user, don't get a 100% air-gapped wallet because you're probably going to be forced to rely upon QR code scanning. And the dynamic QR codes, like even, even when I pause them so that I have like all the time in the world to scan one of the QR codes until it's successful and then move on to the next in the, in the set of dynamic QR code, even then it, it just, it makes me want to rip my hair out. And I've done everything from, you know, like turning off the overhead lights to using the light on the phone itself. You know, sometimes you get lucky and then you start thinking, oh, that must be be the trick. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, I, I just got to turn the overhead light off. It must be just creating too much glare and making it hard to read all the detail in the QR code. And that's why it's not scanning it. No, unfortunately, no. At least in my experience, QR code scanning can be rage inducing and I would avoid it.